everybody, it's Dr. Sam, and I'd like to welcome you to my iClarity podcast. If you want to get in touch with me with questions, you can email me at hello at drsamburn.com, and you can always text me your questions at 1-844-932-1291. I would like to let you know about my new membership program. This is going to offer members new information on how to improve their vision and wellness. So you will get access to articles, video blogs, podcasts, and webinars. Also a live Q&A with me. And all of this information will empower you to make informed decisions about your vision and your health. So to sign up, go to my website, drsamburn.com, and you can see the details there. All right, now on to the show. a few more people expected to check in, but you guys were here on time, and so we're going to go ahead and start. Hope you enjoyed the food from Mas Chile. Um, they're joining us this evening, so round of applause. Thank you, guys. So my name is Cheryl Ansel, and I'm a volunteer with the Santa Fe and Northern New Mexico chapter of SCORE. I'm our chapter chair as well as a mentor, and I work with the business education community. So. Just to give you a little bit of background on SCORE, our mission is to foster small, foster vibrant small business communities through mentoring and education. And we do that in a couple of ways. We do that through offering complimentary and confidential mentoring to small business clients, regardless of the stage of their journey. If you want to start a business or you're already running a business and just need to maybe make some changes or you want to sell your business, SCORE can help you. So that's one of the ways we do the mentoring. And the other is to offer educational workshops much as the one that you're here this evening to see so welcome and thank you all for coming i want to introduce our speaker this evening sam burn um, sam is uh he's actually dr sam burn um, but he's also a score volunteer so we're we're happy he's here tonight in 2016 sam started an internet-based health and wellness uh, brand and he began with zero followers which is over 120,000 followers today with an active email list of 35,000 engaged customers. So he certainly knows what he's talking about when he talks about social media. So he's going to share some tips with us today on how to build a social media community and how to get results. I also want to introduce Jesus Rios. Jesus is a healthcare recruiter and medical interpreter at Christ of St. Vincent. And he's been there since 2025. And he is passionate about helping uh, with the language and recognizing the need for us to do more bilingual events. So Jesus is going to be interpreting for us this evening. And on that note, I'm going to hand it over to Sam and Jesus. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, let's see a show of hands in terms of uh, translation. interpretation. Okay. But yeah, yeah, thank you, Eve. Can you tell me? Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. so I want to see a show of hands. How many here um, are business owners? They have businesses. Quiero ver las manos arriba si alguien aquí tiene un negocio. Okay, very good. Yeah. And how many people use social media professionally? ¿Cuántas personas usan redes sociales profesionalmente? <laughs> okay, well, that's that's about the average in, when I give these talks. A lot of people own businesses, but less people are using social media. So what I want to do tonight is inspire you to maybe start using social media to uh, improve your business. Lo que quiero hacer esta noche es inspirarlos que usen redes sociales para que mejoren sus negocios. 
So a little background about myself. I grew up in a middle class family in the East Coast. Uh, nací en una familia de clase media en, en la en East Coast. And I was always into being an entrepreneur. Siempre quise ser un entrepreneur. I delivered newspapers. Dejaba papeles periódicos. I, um, you know, would go around the neighborhood and I would hustle, you know, shoveling snow. Uh, iba alrededor del vecindario y ayudaba a personas a quitar la nieve. And my family emphasized education. Mi familia siempre se enfatizó en educación. So I went through uh, professional school. I'm an optometrist. Fui a una escuela profesional. Soy un autonomous. And I started a practice in Philadelphia. Y empecé a practicar en Filadelfia. And I built it up and I sold it. Y la crecí y la vendí. And I moved out here in 1990. Me moví aquí en 1990. And I started another practice y here. Y una otra práctica aquí. So in 2016, I realized that the internet was a way that I could scale my business. En 2016 realicé que el internet era algo que podía hacer crecer mi negocio. So what I began doing was going on Facebook Live. Lo que hice es fue hacer a uh, Facebook y hacía lives en Facebook. And I would do a weekly Q&A show. Y hacía semanalmente preguntas y respuestas. And I started with zero followers, listeners. Y empecé con cero followers, uh, personas que me escuchaban. So I used to write the questions. Escribía las preguntas. And I would say, oh, Jane is asking a question ah. from Seattle, Washington. Jane está haciendo una pregunta de Seattle, Washington. And... You know, after about three months, I had about I had about five followers. <laughs> so I want you to know we all started zero. But as I began growing my brand, I recognized that the internet was a golden opportunity for building my business. So I became a SCORE client and uh, they began helping me define my business even more. Me convertí en cliente de SCORE y ellos me ayudaron a encontrar mi negocio aún más. But after a while, de un tiempo, they started to ask me questions. I was the client. Me empezaron a hacer preguntas a mí, yo era el cliente. And what I was doing so well to build my business. Y qué estaba haciendo tan bien para crecer mi negocio. So fast forward today, I'm going to share that wisdom with you. Hasta el día de hoy, voy a compartir esa información con ustedes. So one of the things I think about is being a media company. A una de las cosas que pienso es un, ser una compañía de media. And that means that I was taking my phone and I was documenting my day. Eh, una de las cosas, tomaba mi teléfono y estaba documentando mi día. And I would edit it. Después lo editaba. And then I would use it and post on all the social media channels. Después lo usaba y lo ponía en todas mis uh, herramientas de social media y canales. But I wasn't there to sell people something. Y no estaba ahí para venderle algo a las personas. I was there to create value for the people that might be following me. Estaba ahí para crear valor a las personas que me estaban siguiendo. And so, the key here is if you're going to start posting uh, on social media. La llave aquí es que usted va a estar poniendo cosas en, en, en redes sociales is to sit in the customer's shoes and offer them information that's actually going to really benefit them. Que te sientes, uh, que pongas en los zapatos de, del cliente y les des algo que les va a beneficiar. So, one of the things you've got to think about, you know, with yourself, una de las cosas que tienes que pensar a ti, que tienes que pensar a ti mismo, is what are your strengths? ¿Cuáles son tus uh, cosas más fuertes? Some people love to write. Muchas personas les gusta escribir. And by the way, I'm not a great writer. Una de las cosas, no soy un buen escritor. But I now use ChatGPT to help me write my 
blogs. Pero ahora uso chat GPT para hacer mis blogs. And artificial intelligence is ah. a great way for you to learn about maybe what your business is about and what people might be interested in. Inteligencia artificial creo que es algo muy necesario o muy importante para ver qué es tu negocio y qué la gente está buscando. Let's say some of you like to talk. Digamos que a muchos de ustedes les gusta hablar. Well, you could take your phone. Ustedes pueden agarrar su teléfono. And you could create a podcast. Y pueden crear un podcast. And it'd be very easy for you to upload and start a show based on what your business is about. Y sería muy fácil que ustedes lo suban y empiecen un show de lo que es su negocio. For me, I love video. Para mí, amo videos. And I started something called Morning Walks with Dr. Sam. Y es, hice algo que se llama Morning Walks with Dr. Sam. So I would go hike somewhere and I'd have my gimbal. Voy and, a caminata y tengo mi gimbal. And I would answer people's questions. Y respondo las preguntas de personas. And then I would just post them on social media. Y ya las pongo en, en redes sociales. People love that. People le encanta eso. So my advice would be Start with your strengths. Una de las cosas que yo les puedo decir es que empiecen con sus fuertes. And create content that you could post across all the major social media channels. Que crean contenido y que puedan apostear alrededor de todas las redes sociales. So as I said, we're living in a golden age right now. Como digo, vivimos una era de oro. When I started, I did not have a lot of money to put towards this, uh, this project. Cuando empecé, no tenía mucho dinero para poner este proyecto. And I don't recommend you going into debt. Y no recomiendo que se endeuden. In starting to build your brand. Para empezar a crear su marca. So one of the things I would think about Una de las cosas que he pensado, is if you're selling something, si están vendiendo algo, maybe it's products es producto, or services, o servicios, I do both, yo hago ambos, that first create value for your audience, primero crea valor para tu audiencia, establish a relationship with them, establece una relación con ellos, and then After you build trust, y después de que creas confianza, then you can ask them to participate in buying, whether it's product or service. Y después les puedes preguntar que participen en comprando producto o servicios. But social media is free. A redes sociales es gratis. All you need to do is post. Una de las cosas, una única de las cosas que tienes que hacer es postear. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how to build social media. Una de las cosas que voy a hablar es cómo construir la comunidad en, en, en las redes sociales. How to integrate products and services. Cómo integrar productos y servicios. What it takes to get results. Qué se necesita para tener resultados. And the big thing is time management strategy. Una de las cosas es el manejo del tiempo. So a lot of people ask me, well, how do I actually post muchas, on social media? Muchas de las personas me preguntan, ah, ¿cómo hago para postear en redes sociales? And Google and YouTube have all kinds of references. Google and YouTube tienen muchas referencias. Just today, I was working with uh, Google Voice. El día de hoy está trabajando con Google Voice. And I said, okay, how do I work with this particular part of Google? Y estaba pensando, ¿cómo puedo trabajar con esta parte particular de Google? And I went on YouTube, and within 10 minutes, I figured out how to use it. Y fui a YouTube, y en 10 minutos puede realizar cómo hacerlo. Uh, so, the thing is, is that you can figure it out by just going to Google or YouTube to get your answers. Tú lo puedes figurar yendo a YouTube o Google para tener tus respuestas. 
So when I started posting, cuando empecé a postear, I created a schedule and a calendar, creé un horario y un calendario on how to uh, do the posting. Cómo crear mis postings. And there are scheduling programs. Okay, hay programas de horarios y calendarios. Where you can set up all your posts. Que puedes setear todos tus posts. And they will post them based on the schedule. Y los pueden postear basado en tu horario. So, study the different social media platforms. Estudia las diferentes plataformas de medios sociales. And then you can create content based on that. Y crea contenido adecuado cómo funcionan esas plataformas. Let me give you an example. Déjame te doy un ejemplo. So, TikTok has gotten a lot of press. Uh, TikTok ha tenido mucha prensa. And what I have found is that my videos are about 22 seconds. Mis videos son de 22 segundos aproximadamente. And sometimes I'll just have an idea that comes to me. Y muchas veces simplemente tengo una idea que viene hacia mí. And I'll share my thought on my phone. Comparto mis pensamientos en mi teléfono. And some of those uh, videos have been the biggest viral hit. Y muchos de esos videos han sido los más virales. Where I'll get over 300,000 views. Cuando tengo 300,000 vistas. On the other side of it, en la otra parte de esto, YouTube, YouTube, you can have longer videos. Puedes tener videos más largos. So when I do my podcast, cuando hago mis podcasts, and I have an interview, y tengo una entrevista, that's the place where I'll post that. Y es el lugar donde pongo esos. But, eso. but then I'll take that YouTube video and I'll cut it up to say 20 seconds. Y después tomo ese video YouTube, lo corto en 20 segundos. Just an excerpt. And I'll post it on TikTok and Facebook Reels and Instagram. And so people get to see the podcast, but a small part of it, then I'll have a link. If you want to see the entire podcast, you can click on the link. Entonces, cuando lo corto, lo pongo en TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram Lives, y así esas personas pueden ver lo más importante de lo de mi entrevista. Another thing is to take a look at the differences between the social media sites. Y una de las cosas que también puedes ver es la diferencia entre ambos redes sociales. It used to be Facebook was for kids. Antes era Facebook era para niños. And my audience, uh, 50, the ages 50 to 75, they're on Facebook now. Uh, mi audiencia ahora es de 50 a 75 años, ahora están en Facebook. Just today, I gave a telemedicine session with a woman who lives in Saudi Arabia. Ya el día de hoy, hice una, hice una visita por teléfono de telecomunicación que ven... And she, in Saudi Arabia. Sa Saudi Arabia. And she gave me, uh, she found me on TikTok. Y me encontré en TikTok. So, you'll be surprised if you start posting what will come back to you. Te va a sorprender cuando empieces a postear lo que va a regresar para ti. When I started, I had an old phone. Cuando empecé tenía un teléfono viejo. I had an old laptop. Tenía una uh, computadora vieja. I didn't even have a microphone. Ni tenía un micrófono. And I didn't have a editor or a producer. No tenía un editor o un productor. And some of my most raw videos. Y muchos de mis uh, videos más crudos. Did the best. Fueron los mejores. Because I was being authentic. ¿Por qué? Porque estaba siendo auténtico. So you don't have to go out and buy expensive electronics equipment when you start out. No, cuando empiezas no necesitas ir y comprar uh, productos caros para poder empezar. The key is build a community by giving information without the hook of, hey, buy something. La llave es dar información sin el gancho de decirles, vas a comprar algo. So what I'm talking about is creating brand. Lo que estoy hablando es crear una marca. And this is probably the most important thing I'm going to say tonight. Y esa es una de las cosas más importantes de las cuales voy a decir esta noche. Think about creating brand. Piensa en crear una marca. And that builds your reputation. Y eso va a crecer tu reputación. 
And once you have that reputation, y cuando tengas esa reputación, then you can be transactional with people. Después vas a poder ser transaccional con personas. But if you start off being transactional, pero cuando empiezas a ser transaccional con esas personas, you're not going to build your community. No vas a poder crear tu comunidad. So a key word here is being patient. Una de las claves aquí es ser paciente. Let me give you an example for myself. Déjame dar un ejemplo de mi persona. So um, I, I've written books and I, I just wrote a, a new book and, and I was being transactional about it. Y estabas you know, un poco transaccional sobre eso. And even though the book um, was, well, it, it, it was a compilation of a lot of the Facebook Live uh, shows that I did. Era como una integración de todos los uh, Facebook Live que hice. When I stopped emphasizing the book, cuando empecé a dejar de enfatizarme en el libro, and I went back to emphasizing my brand and educating people, cuando regresé a enfatizarme en mi marca y en educar personas, I sold a lot of books. Vendí muchos libros. Uh, there was another thing that happened where uh, there, was some, there was some research that came out uh, una de las cosas, uh, hubo un research que regresó. that looking at red light actually brings back degenerative vision. Uh, ver una luz roja regresa una visión. The vision that, it's, that you lose your vision as you get older. Uh, tu visión a como te vas haciendo viejo. And so I developed these red glasses, red light glasses, Hice estos lentes de luz roja. and I did some posts on social media before I had the product. Y los puse en redes sociales antes de tener el producto. And it went viral. Y se fue viral. So my manufacturer and my web, my web store team mi manufactura y, uh, mi equipo de were very upset at me because I should have Created, had the product first before I started to talk about it. I mean, it's a problem we all should have, right? <laughs> Anyways, the manufacturing caught up to the, the virality of what I was talking about. But I don't think I would have done as well if I had uh, promoted that product at the very beginning when I started. So what it takes to be successful is patience and persistence. This is why I don't want you to go into debt or spend money so that you don't have enough capital que gastes dinero, que no tengas suficiente capital to pay your expenses. Para pagar tus gastos. Because when I started, Porque cuando yo empecé, I decided that I wanted to reinvest most of my money back into my business. Decidí que quería invertir el dinero que ya había ganado de regreso a mi negocio. Another thing is, una de las cosas también es, don't focus on going viral. No te enfoques en irte viral. Also, don't focus on the video or the audio having to be perfect. Y tampoco te enfoques que en el video y el audio sea perfecto. I'm going to put my links to all my social media sites. Voy a poner todos mis links a mis redes sociales. And you could look at some of my videos that are pretty raw. Que puedes ver algunos de mis videos que están un poco crudos not really that well produced no han sido producidos una manera muy buena but because i created value and education porque creé valor y educación those are some of my best videos son los mejores son los mejores videos the other thing is be willing to make course corrections if you make mistakes estar dispuesto a corregir el rumbo si uh, cometes errores and I have made many mistakes along the way. Y he hecho muchos errores durante este camino. But I'm also in a position right now. Pero también es una posición ahora. Where my e-commerce site is exploding. Donde mi e-commerce site está explotando. And part of it is because of the mistakes I made. Y parte es de los errores que he cometido.
Okay, so if you're going to decide to make content, si has decidido a empezar a crear contenido, you need to create a schedule about when you might create that content. Necesitas crear un horario cuando vas a crear ese contenido. And there are optimal times when you can post on social media. Y hay momentos óptimos para publicar contenidos y obtener a uh, en en crear en, en redes sociales. So in this table, I have put up the kind of general times when you should post. En esta tabla he creado una, un horario general de cuándo debas de postear. And the duration of the the videos. Y la duración de los videos. I can tell you right now that Facebook Reels, te puedo decir que Facebook Reels is a viral place to go. Es un, un lugar viral donde puedes ir. So these are short videos, es son videos pequeños, 30 to 40 seconds. 30 a 40 segundos. And I'm amazed when I put up a video, I'll get 1 to 2 to 3,000 views within a day. Me impresiono porque cuando pongo un video puedo tener a 100,000, 200, 300,000 vistas en un en un día. Another thing that can be very effective is creating a private Facebook group. Una de las cosas que también son efectivas es crear un grupo privado en Facebook. These can be some of your best fans. Esto puede ser uno de tus mejores fans. And because it's a private group, porque es un grupo privado, you can share kind of more premium content to them. Puedes crear un contenido más premium hacia eso. If your business is a business to business, B to B, si tu negocio es negocio to negocio, then LinkedIn would be a place you should focus. Uh, LinkedIn es un lugar donde debes de enfocar. Now, even though my business is more B to C, uno de mis negocios es más tu business to consumer, uh, negocio tu consumidor, you'll see that I post a lot on LinkedIn. Puedes ver que pongo muchas cosas en LinkedIn. And what I do with LinkedIn, y lo que hago con LinkedIn, is I'm sharing industry trends, a comparto a uh, trends de industria, and new research that's coming out, y nuevos a uh, research que están llegando. So I spoke about the difference between transactional Hablo sobre la diferencia entre acción, which has no long-term growth, lo cual no tiene a, a largo plazo a crecimiento, and brand building, which insulates you from any competition. Eh, crear tu marca que te, te hace insolación de cualquier competencia. So if you think about like Amazon, si hablamos de Amazon, they could come and eat you up in a second. Te pueden llegar y consumir en un segundo. Especially if you're dealing with transactional type um, uh, well, like tra transaction where you're just selling. Uh, especialmente si estás lidiando con transacciones simplemente cuando estás vendiendo. But if you have a brand that you've built, Pero si tienes una marca que has crecido, then you're insulated from all of these market forces. Pero estás insolado de todas estas fuerzas de marca. So one of the things that I would ask you to do una de las cosas que te voy a pedir que hagas is create a mission statement. Uh, crea un, uh, un párrafo de misión. So you can see that that's my mission statement. Puedes ver que esa es mi declaración de misión. And then I created a website y después creé una página web that expresses that brand and message. Que representa esa marca y mensaje. Another thing that you need to be aware of in this process una de las cosas que tienes que tomar en cuenta en este proceso is keep your expenses low at the beginning. Mantén tus gastos bajos al inicio. Decide which social media platforms you personally spend time on. Decide qué plataformas y medios sociales gastas tu tiempo. And what's the best way you like to receive social media information. Y cuál es la mejor forma que quiere recibir uh, información de las redes sociales.
So one of the things I did Una de las cosas que yo he hecho, is I built my brand for about four years. Uh, creé mi, mi marca por aproximadamente cuatro años. And in March of 2020, en marzo del 2020, when COVID came on the scene, cuando COVID vino, I was having a session with my SCORE mentors. Estaba haciendo una sesión con mis mentores de SCORE. And they said, why don't you start an e-commerce site? ¿Por qué, no empiezan, ¿Por qué no empiezas en e-commerce site? So I launched it in June. Lo empecé en junio. And it really took off. Y empezó a crecer. And then I started my own Amazon store with my products on it. Después comencé una tienda en Amazon con mis productos en ella. But I feature most of my products on my e-commerce site. Pero la mayoría de mis productos los pongo en mi e-commerce site. And that's what I would recommend for you. Y es lo que recomiendo para ti. I also started a podcast in 2017 called the iClarity Podcast. Y también empecé un podcast uh, en, uh, en 2017. And now I'm on Apple iTunes. Ahora estoy en Apple iTunes. Spotify. Spotify. Amazon. Amazon. And my own website. Y mi propia página. The I've also put it up on YouTube as También well. Lo he puesto en YouTube. And we average over 10,000 uploads of that show every month. Y hacemos probablemente 10,000 uh, uh, uploads cada oh, mes. That's okay. And uh, we have like an 85 to 90% impact, meaning people listen to the whole podcast. Tenemos un impacto de 85 al 90%. Eso significa que las personas están escuchando el podcast. So, uh, we'll do a Q&A at the end. Vamos a hacer un, a preguntas y respuestas al final. But, take a look at what Google might offer you. Pero ve lo que Google te puede ofrecer. In terms of where you might want to start. En términos donde puedas empezar. So one of the things that I had to think about when I started posting is how much time I could put to it tiempo puedo poner hacia eso? because I was already working full-time in my practice. Ya en mi so I did everything on the weekend Hice todo los fines de semana. and I used a scheduling program. Y And I've learned to do everything in my business. Y a hacer todo en mi I'm now making enough money Ahora estoy that I have nine employees que tengo nueve who are doing a lot of those things now. Están todas esas cosas por ahora. And I'm getting ready y estoy, uh, to start a membership service, a subscription service. A empezar un servicio de membresía. And I'd be happy to talk to you about that y estoy, feliz de sobre eso, if you are interested. Si estás interesado. So in this table, this is a sample. En esa tabla es un ejemplo. For you to do a personal inventory Pagas. on para que hagas un, un inventario personal on what your interest and comfort levels are en qué niveles de comodidad te encuentras in being able to post para que puedas postear and how many hours a week you would need to be able to post on these different uh, social media platforms. ¿Cuántas horas a la semana vas a tener para postear en estos diferentes redes sociales? So, my suggestion, if you could, Mi opinión, si puedes, is start, start posting on all of those sites. Es que empieces a postear en todas esas redes sociales. So, what I do on Twitter, lo que hago en Twitter, is I'll have an idea. Tengo una idea. It may be two sentences. Era dos párrafos. I post it on Twitter. Los pongo en Twitter. And then I take a photograph of it on my phone. Después tomo una foto en mi teléfono. And I crop the slide. Uh, la corto. And I post it on Instagram stories. Lo pongo en Instagram stories. Instagram and Facebook. Instagram and Facebook. So what I've done. Lo que he hecho. 
is I repurpose a lot of the um, the, the posts that I create. Uh, vuelvo a usar todos los posts que ya he creado. And it saves me time because I can take one piece of content and then I can put it to the other social media sites. Me ahorra tiempo porque de esa manera puedo usar lo que ya puse en una red social y ponerlo en la otra. So another thing to consider is Again, if you're selling products Otra de las cosas que debes de considerar, and, si or, vendiendo productos, and or offering service. O si estás ofreciendo servicios. So during COVID, Durante COVID, I started to do online workshops. Empecé a hacer uh, workshops en línea. And if you want to know how to do that, y si quieres saber cómo hacer eso, it has a high profit margin. Tiene un, uh, un margen de profit alto. So as I was building my brand, estaba, uh, mi marca, and I would charge, say, $400 for a weekend workshop, and I would get 50 to 100 people to sign up, y tenía 50, 100 personas que se inscribían, almost all of that money was profit. Todo dinero era ganancia. On the e-commerce side, en el lado de e Because the products don't have such as high of a margin. Porque los productos no tienen un margen alto. And I didn't want to spend money on advertising. Y no quería gastar dinero en mercadotecnia. I started to collect email addresses. Empecé a colectar correos electrónicos. And I developed a skill. Y creé, creé una habilidad. Of being able to create newsletters. En hacer al, uh, noticias. Announcing sales. Anunciando ventas. And the return on investment on that y el regreso de ganancias en eso was really high. Era muy alto. And so I would also uh, recommend that you find ways to collect name and email addresses. También te voy a pedir que busques una forma de colectar nombres y correos electrónicos. And they get proficient at an email Platform. Y te vuelvas un experto en, en una, una área de correo electrónico. I use two. Uso dos. Mailchimp. Mailchimp. And Clavio. And Clavio. Now one of the reasons why I like Clavio. Una de las razones por la que me gusta Clavio. Is because I'm also asking people for their phone numbers. También les pregunto a las personas por su número de teléfono. And I say text me your question. Y les digo. Mándame un mensaje con tu pregunta. So when they text me their question, Cuando me mandan un mensaje con su pregunta, I now have their, their phone number. Ahora ya tengo su número de teléfono. And this weekend I'm doing a sale. Y esta fin de semana estoy haciendo una, una venta. And I'm sending all my text people. Y todos los que me mandaron un mensaje, les voy a enviar mensajes. The first wave of being able to buy my products. La primera ola de cómo poder comprar mi producto. And texting... I think mandar mensajes creo has replaced email hasta reemplazando correos electrónicos in terms of direct to consumer en términos de, de consumidor directo Okay Let's talk about podcasts for a minute Okay vamos a hablar de podcast por un minuto I think everybody in here should start a podcast Creo que todos aquí deben empezar un podcast And you might say what is the topic ¿Cuál va a ser el tema. Let's say you're in real estate. Digamos que tú trabajas en venta de casas. I might start a podcast on what are the great things about living in Santa Fe. Probablemente voy a empezar un podcast que es cuáles son las cosas maravillosas de vivir en Santa Fe. And I would interview restaurant owners. Me entrevistaría a, re, a dueños de restaurantes. Art gallery owners. A, a dueños de galerías. Healers. A sanadores. And there would be a cross pollination. Y va a haber una, una polinización cross-pollination. Yeah, uh, there'd be a, a connection. Una conexión. Where? Donde? They would get to meet the realtor. Donde van a conocer al, al de bienes raíces. And the realtor could then promote the other businesses. Y él pueda promover todos los otros negocios. And you would be creating a lot of goodwill. Y vas a poder crear bastante and also brand y también marca and i bet y te prometo as a realtor como uh, bienes raíces by creating this forum 
creando este foro, you would get a lot of business from. Vas a traer mucho negocio. So there are apps out there that you can use. Hay aplicaciones ahí que puedes usar. That are right on your phone. Que están en tu teléfono. Where you could be walking in a park, stating uh, stating something, some idea that you've had. Y puedes caminar en un parque donde puedas decir una idea que has tenido. And upload it right to your podcast. Y subirla en tu podcast. I do about four to six podcasts a week. Yo hago cuatro a seis podcasts a la semana. Sometimes my podcasts are three minutes. Muchos de, muchos de las veces mis podcasts son de tres minutos. When I do interviews, cuando hago entrevistas, they're an hour and a half. Son una hora y media. So people get to choose. I got a five minute. I got an hour and a half. Las personas pueden elegir. Tengo una hora y media. Tengo cinco minutos. But it keeps people engaged in what I'm talking about. Pero mantiene people interesada en lo que estoy hablando. Again, I'm a media channel. Uh, otra vez, soy uh, un canal de media. You don't need fancy microphones to no, start. No necesitas uh, micrófonos caros para empezar. Just use your phone. Usa simplemente tu teléfono. Another option in your podcast content. Otra opción en tu contenido de podcast. Is what I did. Lo que hice yo. Which is ask the audience es a la to send me questions. Que me and the whole, my whole content was created based on them answering, uh, my answering their questions. Y mi contenido fue creado en yo responder a sus preguntas. So that's another way that you can automatically have content created for you. Es una de las cosas que automáticamente puedes crear contenido para ti. So you will get this. Ustedes van a obtener esto. This is all my social media handles. Todas esas son mis redes sociales. And my suggestion would be to go on there. Y mi opinión es que vayas ahí. Just to get a taste of what I'm actually doing. Uh, para que tengas una probada de lo que estoy haciendo. Okay. Ahora. We're going to stop here. Vamos a parar aquí. And I want to open it up. To questions. Y lo quiero abrir a preguntas. We have with me. Yes. Before I forget, because I was writing down my question. <laughs> um, for the Q&A podcast, or podcast, um, you said there were short ones, or how, how, how long were those, and how do you do those? Well, when I first started, I would just ask people to email me their question. And I would literally read the question or if it was a, you know, a common question, what I would do is I would create more content around it. So what's your business? Um, I'm a doctor for Okay, that's easy. So with Doctor of Oriental Medicine, you could say, "Okay, send me your questions right now. It's allergy season." Um, I bet you would get some questions on that, and so then you have your method of how you would treat people, and you could either do generic answers, or I know you could give some answers that are outside of "I don't want to take drugs," "I don't want to get shots," you know. So you like. A liver and eyes, that's like a big one we talk about. So, you know, you could do one on eye health. You could do one on, you know, women's health. You could do, you you know, and just start putting it out there about questions. And if you don't get any questions, then make up the questions, you know, from your patients. And maybe a good way to start it would be to do an Instagram Live or to do a Facebook Live. And that way, even if nobody is on there, that will be archived on Facebook. And so people will get to see it a lot of times who couldn't be there live. I mean, what we do now is I have a producer and we ask people to send their phone number to us while we're live and we call them. And so they're like so excited. Oh my God, Dr. Sam is calling me, you know, and it's all live. And uh, they get to ask their question, and that's really cool. Um, so you could decide what platform you want to go on. Some people like YouTube Live, 
Some people like Facebook, some people like Instagram. I even do TikTok Live. So you could pick one of those and say, all right, I'm going to do a weekly show from five to six, and I'm just going to be here. I mean, I did this for four years where I would show up every Wednesday from six to seven in my Facebook Live. And over time, people would find out about it. They'd either come on the show or they would send me their question. And then I would take that and I would, I would uh, edit it and I could turn it into a podcast. I actually do that now when I have a Facebook Live show. I run it through my podcast channel and I'll also transcribe it and then I can turn it into a written blog. So there's a lot of things that I'm doing with that just with that one live show. You could also have guests on. You can have me on. So I would be bringing my community. I always talk about acupuncture. I love it. And, you know, so you could target certain people as a Q&A where they would come on your show as a guest. And it takes time. It's, it's going to, you know, it's going to start to snowball. But, oh, it's a no-brainer for you to put that out there. I, I think, do you have any products that you sell? Do you have an e-commerce site? Are you well, thinking uh, about... I sell some emergency nutrition. Okay, so, so again... It's not really So you could you know, hook in with Shopify very easily and probably get set up with a few products if you wanted to do that. And, you know, if not, that's okay too. You know, what's, what, this is a question for everybody. What's your end game? You know, why are you here? What is it that you're wanting to accomplish? I guess that would be the first question I would ask everybody and ask you, why do you want to do something like this? Do you want to get more clients? Do you want, why are you doing this? Do you know? Social media? Yeah. Why Why would you want to embark on that? Do you want to get more clients? Do you want to... Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Is that, is, I mean, that's easy. Uh, if you start going out on social media, uh, you will get more clients than you know what to do with. I mean, you will be overwhelmed. Now, the, the thing is, is that because the social media is international, you might start getting people from other locations. So then at that point... That's fine. I'll do remote. Exactly. You could turn your whole practice into remote if you want to. And so people wouldn't even need to come to see you. But I can tell you, as a doctor, doing that kind of a thing, if you stay with it, you will have more business than you know what to do with. I mean, you could do some LinkedIn stuff, and you would get other acupuncturists, and you could teach a seminar. Come to Santa Fe and do a weekend with me at Ojo Caliente. I mean, there's lots of spin-offs from this. Or you could get invited to some big national or international acupuncture conference because you're an expert. You are. It's so funny. People will come to see me and they go, oh, my God, you're such a celebrity. And it's, you know, my wife and I joke about it. It's, yeah, I am on social a lot. I do lots of posts. I have lots of followers. But anybody could do it. So, I mean, it's just a perspective. Does that help? Yeah, it's kind of overwhelming. It is kind of I know, overwhelming. I'm here because I know virtually nothing about social media. You know, pick one social media site and maybe just start posting a little bit on it. You know, I mean, I'm sure you've got some great stuff. Um, you could do the slide. You could do uh, a Twitter, something. You, I mean... It'd be easy and just start doing it and, and see what you get come come back at you and start slowly. You know, I started just on Facebook and it was slow and steady. And then, oh, my God, this one day it just exploded. And then I was like, OK, now what? That's a great position to be in. So the Q&A the Q podcast you do on Facebook Live and what else? Well, at this point, I'm not doing Facebook Live because I'm so busy. I just create a podcast and I upload it to my website. And uh, Blueberry, Blueberry, um, or I think it's Burberry, is the platform I use. It costs me like $30 a month. And they'll teach you how to just take the MP3 file uh, from GarageBand and then you just up upload it right to your podcast. And they will disseminate it to Apple, Apple and uh, Spotify and Amazon, 
So it's pretty simple to do. You might get a nice picture of yourself. You might, you know, what do you want to call the podcast? So you do a little marketing there and uh, maybe match it up with your website. And uh, there you go. Now you have an archive of podcasts and you have a question. We'll go to this podcast and that will cover it. So it's pretty, pretty easy once you get going and just go at your speed. You don't have to do what I do. Make it work for you. I have a question for you, Sam. Yeah, sure. So you showed a couple of charts which were great. One is how much time it takes to, or how much time you should give to each one, like Facebook posts should be sure. whatever, how many seconds. And you also talked about how often you do it. So if I think about a lot of our small businesses, they have, you know, limited people. It might be one, one to five people, maybe more. Do you have any recommendations for resources to help people that just really don't have the time to do it, but really, really need to and want to kind of lean into it? So when you when you ask that question, um, is it the actual posting or is it the creating? It's the creating. It's probably both. Okay, so it's probably both. Really, yeah. So with creating, there there's two possibilities that I use. One is documenting and the other is storytelling. Those are two really simple ways. So let me think of a documentation for myself. Recently, I was on a book tour and I went to uh, LA and I was in San Diego and I was doing a master class. So I kind of documented the trip, traveling, who I talked to, organizing it, setting it up, going there. And then I cut it up into small pieces and it actually promoted the, the workshop because I posted it before and during. And so that was my documentation. I always tell lots of stories about success stories or now I'm posting a lot about social media and what I'm doing there. So, you know, take a story that maybe happened to you and just talk about it. I think that if you go on YouTube, or Google and you say, how do I post on such and such? Or how do I create content? I think you can get a lot of information on how to do that. I think it's right there for you. And remember when I started, I did everything. So now when I hire somebody, I know whether they're doing a good job or not because I did their job. Whether it's advertising, whether it's fulfillment, whether it's creating content, whether it's posting. And I would also say, this gets a little off tangent, when I have employees, if I have great employees, I give them raises, I, I'm, I really try to build a culture, but there have been times when there's been an employee that's been kind of off and I fire them. And you have to be good at firing. You have to be good at firing because you need to get the right people in the right position. But back to your question, I think just going on YouTube and typing in, this is asking the question, you will get video, you will get written, this is how you do it. And you just experiment. So, you know, when I started, I just put it out there. And then I would get feedback from people or feedback from what I was doing, and I would experiment. I would put out different um, content posts, and sometimes I would get very few views. It's like, oh, I'm learning something from that. Or from the comments. I learn a lot from the customer comments, the feedback. So I think it's kind of a, a fluid process where you're going to put some stuff out, see what comes back, make adjustments, put other things out. But I would say jump in the water. Just do it. Yes? How do you manage the risks? So obviously when you put yourself out on social media, there's a lot of brand influencers out there that I think are very well intentioned, but there's a lot of haters. So how do you manage that? Well, I only talk about what I know about. So if I don't know about it, I don't talk about it. My expertise is very narrow. You know, if somebody is asking me a question about a certain surgical procedure, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a surgeon, so I never talk about that stuff. I only talk about what's in my wheelhouse. And... I also have gotten some haters. I've gotten some people that have been really difficult. So one of the good things about social media is if somebody crosses a line, you can immediately block them. 
You can report them, and that's it. You don't have to deal with it. Nobody in here should take abuse from people. I mean, people are unhappy, and they put that hate out there. That I don't have any place for that in my community. So I immediately stopped that. Uh, there are times that people have challenged me and, you know, asked me questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to find the answer. And I'm very humble about it. So, and, and I only talk about what I know about. I don't put my family on there, my personal life. I, I keep it very narrow to the brand, but at the same time, I have lots of interests. So for example, um, I like to ski. So I ski up in Taos. So I'll go up there and I'll do a video on up, up on the mountain and I have a video where I'm skiing. And so people are really into that. I did a whitewater rafting trip uh, down um, the Colorado River. So I talked about the environmental stuff and the Colorado River in, in Canyonlands. So somebody who was not interested in my brand, they're interested in nature, or they're interested in whitewater rafting, they found me. So it's okay for you to put your other interests up there, you know, if you want to do that, but you get to choose what you want to put out there. And, you know, some people like to have their dogs or their cats, you know, that's a big thing. Uh, you don't need to sing or dance. I do not sing or dance on TikTok. If you look, if you look at TikTok, I'm just informational and, you know, it, it's done, I've done very well with it. So stay within what you're comfortable with. And if you do that, it'll work fine. Yes. yes. So when you did say the white rafting or skiing, do you connect it to eyes or is it no. just? No, no, I don't connect it to eyes at all. So basically, you do whatever you want. You started out developing a brand. Yeah, I started out developing a brand, and how can I help you? You know, my attitude was, I don't want anything in return. Um, how can I create value for you so, so that you keep coming back? Like, I want information from you. So what's your business? Well, I'm making a documentary film. Okay. Wow. Well, you're making... All right. Cool. So... No, I'm challenged to see how I could do this. So in a document, what's your subject matter? Is it... Uh... No, no. It's almost a film. It's um, trying to get recreate. It's a film following a Beretta woman who's okay. um, pointing out that the Trinity bomb, world's first nuclear bomb, radiated in southern New Mexico, and there have been five generations of cancer, and trying to get reparations from Congress. Okay. So have you thought about at all your social media strategy or no. your marketing stamp strategy? Mm -hmm. You know, this always happens because um, I have the greatest idea in the world. Here's my idea. Here's my product. But I don't have any followers. And that's that I you know I get that three times a week from people. They have the best thing, the best product. So one of the things I would consider is maybe start thinking about how you could get that information. Like I would probably go for Instagram and whether you do photography, whether you do short excerpts, whether you do other content like I would do chat GPT and see what kind of things you get in terms of this particular topic and whether you want to use that for blogging or just background information um, you know do you have funding behind you or is this you know what, what's the what's the money there is it is it pretty on the shoestring it's always been very much on the shoestring every once okay. in a while now we've been getting big grants and then I want to go pretty quickly I mean, um, what, what are you suggesting? Well, I mean, you know, in, in this particular case, there is thing, a thing like celebrity influence. So if you found, say, a well-known actor, I mean, the, all these actors are so great at acti activism. You know, if you get somebody like Leonardo DiCaprio or, you know, Margot, um, you know, there's a lot of actors out there that if you could, con so you can DM them on Instagram. This is a way uh, to get celebrity influencers. So what you yeah, could, what's a direct message. So on Instagram, 
you could you could say I'm so and so I'm a documentarian I'm getting ready to put out this film could you take a look at it would you be uh, interested in you know endorsing it or giving me a testimonial and because this the subject matter is so near and dear and there's the environmental there's the human interest you might be surprised that you get a couple of celebrities and boom you're in the big picture I mean that would that would that is what I would do it's not going to cost you anything and just be real realize that on an ego level you might get a hundred no's before you get a yes just keep putting it out there maybe there's the first tier Hollywood actors and then maybe there's the the people in the second tier or the third tier and you know if you could get a couple celebrities in the testimonial world that could oh, yeah. that would make it right there and it, it sounds like a really worthwhile project I mean wow it's really cool uh, how do you uh, direct message a celebrity so so let's say let's say you were a celebrity and I wanted you to uh, endorse my eye drops hey so and so uh, my name's dr. Sam Byrne and I have this great brand uh, these eye drops you know of reverse cataracts and blah 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 would you be in, could I send you a couple of bottles would you be interested in possibly you know endorsing me or you know taking a look at it um, so just it's like a cold call but do you contact them on your Facebook fan site or how so I would probably go through Instagram yeah and so if you come to somebody's site let's say it's my site okay you come to my site there's a way a way that you can send me a message and it's called direct messaging and so right there it's kind of like I'm you're gonna write something and you're gonna send it to me and maybe I don't see it I mean I look at all my direct messages and I'm getting hit on all the time by people that want to you know be my video editor or they want to do this or they want to do that so um, Instagram would be a good I think would be the site to do and um, you know you might have to go on Instagram and say how do I direct message and then what you do is you search maybe actors who might be interested in this kind of a project who are well known oh my god actors love this kind of thing they love getting billing because they they're wealthy they've made their money so they would love to help a cause like yours but you would have to go to you can't just direct Message You'd be surprised. Director. You you yeah. would be surprised really? that um, so Lady Gaga, for example, you know who's I don't know. It's like I might contact her, and sure. so I don't know. She's got like fifty six million followers or something <laughs> like that. But you never know. Maybe her publicist reads it and says, "Hey, what do you think of this? This is like a really cool project." You just don't know on social media. We have a lot of actors in New Mexico that might be interested. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could, you could, you could. the graph. Yeah, so I mean, you know, you can look at the younger. You could, you know, you could, you, you, you can look at a lot of things. You can go into music. You know, I think you have to sit down and say, who do I want to target here? And I, for for this project, I would definitely do celebrity direct messaging. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. Both. So when I started, I just did organic. Now I do pre-roll YouTube ads. I do Facebook ads. I do Instagram ads. Um, and so what I do is I'll look at a video that's gone viral uh, from the organic side, and I'll create an ad video for that. So let let me see if I can think of a okay. So one of the big issues that in in the eyes is floaters. People get these floaters, and I did a a, a couple of videos that went viral on TikTok and Facebook. So I have certain eye drops that dissolve the floaters. So now I'm running ads that are you know off those viral videos, and it's working really well. Same with pre pre roll YouTube, which I would recommend. For anybody because let's say you know let's say somebody is looking for some kind of a something and that's what you sell and you create a pre-roll pre, -to, pre
pre-roll YouTube ad and somebody is watching some YouTube ad and you come on there because somebody on Google was searching exactly for what you wanted and people go, oh my God, they're reading my mind. And that could be a great you know, way for you to get business. But you have to look at your budget. And when I started, I was on a shoestring budget and I didn't take profit for like five years. I, my, my CPA, my bookkeeper, they were like going insane. Like, what do you mean you're not taking profit? I said, because I want to I want to scale vertically faster than taking a profit. I don't need a Rolex watch. I don't need, you know, a, a, a Maserati car or whatever. So by reinvesting back into the company, I could hire more people. And that's how I'm scaling it. That's me. You, you know, you may have a child, you've got to put her through school or You've got a, an elder that you've got to take care of. So you have to look at your, you know, what's going on in your life. But I would say the more you can hire people to do the things you don't want to do, and that's a way that you can scale. And so you have to just take a look, look at your personal situation and your budgeting. This is where SCORE is really good because they have people in SCORE that can do these uh, Excel programs and figure out this is your budgeting, this is your margin you know, and so on and so forth. But the more you can reinvest in the business, at least early on, you're going to grow faster. Other questions? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I have a más followers, so I went back. So when I started posting, me, me, me to que post every day. Todos días, un post to post todos los días. I want to post every day. That's what they recommend. Pero con el paso del tiempo, muy tenía cinco, cinco likes, I likes, five dos likes, likes, after a while, two ocho likes, likes, eight likes. Me cansé. I was tired. Solo he posteado una, uno al mes. I only post one a month. Eh, y obviamente no tengo tantos obviously, clientes. I Todos los clientes place. que he tenido los he eh, tomado en Instagram. Well, the clients that I have right now, I take it from Instagram. Quisiera seguir teniendo más followers, pero no, la verdad no. Siento que lo que ya puse already, ya la información que puse, si vuelvo a poner más información, es como repetitivo. Como I feel like if I put the same information that I already did, I feel like it's repetitive. Because I already put that information. Sí, entonces already. no sé so, cómo ser como how innovadora. Innovate. Be more innovate. Okay. So, first of all, primeramente, I would post four to eight a day. Postaría, how many? Four to eight. De cuatro a ocho al día. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I would do it in Instagram. Y lo haría en Instagram. Facebook. Okay. Facebook. And TikTok. And TikTok. Okay. And e. can you ask people to send their questions to you? Podrías preguntar a las personas que manden tus, sus preguntas hacia ti. And that could create innovation. Y eso va a crear innovación. Okay. And just be patient with it. Simplemente se paciente con él. Can you start a podcast? Puedes empezar un podcast? Nunca he entrado en el mundo de podcast. No I es... never entered to that wall. Has. Sí, que, o sea, no sé ni siquiera. Sí sé que ese es un audio. I know what it is. Un audio, pero I know no sé ni cómo audio. subirlo. But I don't no know how to upload it. I don't know any of that. Go on YouTube. Vea YouTube. Sí, okay. How to start a podcast. Y yeah. yeah. ponle yeah. cómo empezar yeah. un podcast. Okay, okay. And within an hour, y después de una hora, you'll be an expert. Vas a ser un experta. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you know? Sabías? I am now um, doing my podcast. I'm sorry. I'm doing my posts. Estoy haciendo mis posts with Spanish subtitles. Con uh, subtítulos en español. Because there is a whole group of okay, people grupo de personas who are interested in me. Que están interesadas en mí. And so. You can do Spanish, you can also do English. And by the way, eventually, with your podcast, uh, with your posts, you could do um, transcript and turn that into a written blog. 
y puede hacer eso en, en un bloque de, de escrito. Okay. I say the same things over and over again. Digo las mismas cosas una y otra vez. Eso es lo que a mí me conflictúa porque siento That's que what I have conflict with. la información, si la digo otra vez, la gente se va a información again, again. People are get bored because I already say it again. No, the feed is always different. Uh -huh. No, siempre el, lo que te van a decir va siempre, siempre ser diferente. And sometimes I have to say it ten times. Muchas de las veces lo tengo que decir diez veces. Before a person gets it. Yeah. Hace que una persona lo pueda entender. So keep doing it. Sigue haciendo que. Don't worry about no te that it's repetitive. Si es repetitivo. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I have a uh, it's not kind of question, but uh, how was Dr. Sam before starting all this thing in terms of personality or mm. he was introvert, extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> he had the same knowledge than now. Or, yeah. Okay, yes. So I was very introverted and I actually took voice lessons. I took improv acting classes. He was Santa Fe improv. And I was the only actor in the in the class, and I used to have to get up, and the coach would say, okay, I want you to talk about this for three minutes. I couldn't do it. And now, I love improv. Like, uh, to me, I, I don't even want that. I would just come here and just say, okay, let's talk about something. So I've become really comfortable at improvisation. And I've studied a lot of different creative ways to be improvisational. I think you know, expanding your creativity and also knowing what your strength is. So if you like to write, do that. You could also do voiceover. So you could have beautiful pictures and then you could just talk if you don't want to be on video. So you have to find what works for you and then just do that. And what's your business? Um, actually, it's, I'm going to start like a transportation. Transportation, so say more. What, what do you mean transportation? Like shipping. Shipping, so you ship things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, would you kind of, would you help other businesses ship so you're like a fulfillment that kind of thing or mm, probably contracting with somebody else contracting with one other business or many businesses many probably. okay well depending so i i gotta tell you when i started my e-commerce i had a third party fulfillment house and they charged me a lot of money i was losing money because they were charging so much so i created my own in-house fulfillment uh, team. So I have a fulfillment house here in Santa Fe, and I also have one up in Idaho. And so they work for me. And I saved a lot of money that way. And so I can tell you that like the big boys, they charge a lot for the e-commerce. Amazon charges the most. And if you marketed it the right way, you probably would be overwhelmed with, you know, getting customers who where you're shipping to them. What about international? Are you going to do any of that, or is it mostly domestic? Oh, it's the sky. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, like with international, we have tough times with international sometimes because of customs and other things. So I know that if you marketed it to you know e-commerce uh, sites depending on what you feel comfortable fulfilling, again, I think you'd be really busy and you just have to decide what you want to do and you know what's your end game, how much you want to make, how much you want to work. But I could see you doing some posts on, you know, how to ship, what, what do you do, how do you pack it, you know, what's, you know, all, everything that's involved with that. I'm curious about that because, you know, we have fulfillment people that do that for me. What's the packaging? You know, um, so I think that's a very interesting thing you're doing.
Yes. Do you ever work with artists? All the time. So with artists, um, you know, you can, I mean, this, this gets really involved where if you're a visual artist, um, you can put your stuff up on, you know, different sites to, and you don't have to go through the gallery. See, the thing what the internet has done, it's eliminated the middle person. I'm using artwork archives. Uh-huh. And how is that working for you? You haven't started. So how many followers do you have on your social media? Zero. Okay. So cool. So you pick, is there one platform you really like? On Instagram. That's where I would start. And I would just start posting some things on there about your artwork, like your process. Uh, like on TikTok, there are these artists. By the way, I think TikTok would be another one. Um, document what you're doing, like film the process. Well, I'm a weaker, so it's hard to... So what you could do with that is you could do time-lapse and um, in the time-lapse, let's say I don't know how long you work for two hours, within 30 seconds you're going to go from start to, wow, look at what I'm doing here, and educate us about what's involved. Where do you get your product? Um, how do you do it? What was your background? Um, I want to know about you. Um, what kind of things are you doing? Why are you doing those things? Um, and so then once you've got the followers and you're educating, I definitely would do TikTok. I've seen some great artists. And go on TikTok and look, weaver, look at weavers and see what they're doing. Uh, there's this wonderful Japanese artist. I mean, he's got like 3 million followers at this point, And he does watercolor painting. It's amazing. And he documents it. And he does time lapse, so you see the beginning, you see the end. Um, so it's a great way for you to go direct to the consumer. And just start building, just start building your followers. Maybe you, I don't know if you want to do a, a class. I don't know what, no, okay, so you don't want to do that. But you just want to sell. Yes. Okay. So um, just start creating your community and see what comes back. I mean, zero, you can't get any worse. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Are we coming back to the other? Okay. One, one, one final question. Anybody? Yes. So, like, once you know when it's time to hire somebody? Um, it's always time to hire somebody. <laughs> I, I would say you have to look at your budget. Um, you know, one of the sources I use is a platform called Upwork. Have you ever heard of Upwork? Uh, so Upwork, if you go on Upwork, you can type in, okay, this is the, the person I need, and you'll get these freelancers. And I tell you, every one I've gotten of those people, they've been us. I got my bookkeeper. I got the person that's posting my social media. I've got a graphic artist. Uh, I've got a photographer. Uh, there's some really great people. But, you know, it's like, what don't you like doing? And then when you know that, that's the person you want to hire. So that you can spend your time as the CEO, as the visionary, as the person with the ideas. And, you know, like what I did, I started in the mailroom, and now I'm the CEO and the chief operating officer, but I can do everybody's job. And so... You know, it's just as soon as you can hire somebody, do so, because that will scale your business faster. Does that help? Okay. It's called Upwork. Up and then the word work. Upwork. It's national, international. You can advertise or national or international. I have an editor of mine who lives in Colombia. And she's my Spanish uh, connection. So she does all my um, subtitles in Spanish. And now I'm giving her other projects where I'm teaching her this is what I want. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's a, get, get an assistant to help you. Are, how, when you're on your platform, how do people buy? What's the transaction? Can they buy? 
So you might consider, you know, you could talk with them, but Shopify is so easy to set up. Do you have a website? No. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, there's, there's ways that you can set up inexpensive websites and get a, um, you know, an e-commerce part of that that's connecting to Shopify, and that, that would be something that you want to set up. I mean, some, go ahead. Send your list of people a private viewing link. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's and, you, and you can change it many, many times. You can send it to the gallery owner. Or oh, that's great. So, you know, however you can do it where it's the least amount of money for you now, and then once you get going, you could take a look at, do I want to have my own? Like, I don't know what their commission is, how much they take. Nothing. Okay, so how do they make their money? Pay for this so you pay pay like a membership or a, a month. okay now when you do that uh, is it like if you have more artwork is it more money yes okay right exactly and you just charge a lot for each piece yeah got it because it's a lot of time yeah, yeah I want to know about all that well, I want to know about that. I want to see you on TikTok talking about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that because then I might I, I have a relationship with you, so I might want to buy something. I see. I see. Okay, I want to know who you are. What's behind it as a human being? And so we're establishing a relationship. That's when I. It's not going to be something like oh, I just see it on the internet. I want to know the backstory and cultivate that and see where that takes you. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Thank you. So that was great. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Jesus. Um, thank you. It was a lot of great information, and um, I know everyone took great notes, and they were great questions. But the one thing was, YouTube has answers. <laughs> also, Dr. Sam will help you, so you can you can contact him. I know as a SCORE volunteer, he'd be more than happy. So um, through SCORE, he can help you. I also was interested to hear artificial intelligence from you about using that to create some of the content because it's a it's a controversial thing I think that's it new is. and people are still getting used to that. But uh, that let, was let, great. Me, let me make a comment about that. So everything that I'm looking at, I'm also researching it. So I make sure that what they're coming up with, I have to put it through my own filtering system to make sure. And I think what's going to happen in AI is there's probably going to be some licensing things that are going to come up and trademark. This, this, this is going to be a hot topic. Yeah. But I think to get background ideas, I think it's phenomenal. Also, um, the talk about what you know. I thought that was a really important message to the, to, about any concerns about haters and things like that. Talk about what you know. Be authentic. Be consistent. And the one thing that I really feel from you is that you have fun doing it. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's important. And then you mentioned that you don't sing and dance, but I want to know who wants to see him sing and dance on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, you've got a whole group sing. of followers. I can sing. There you go. So, anyway, thank you all for coming. Just again, a reminder about SCORE. We offer complimentary and confidential mentoring. Um, so if you need help with anything, please contact us. We also offer educational webinars and workshops throughout the year, so check our website, Awesome. Thanks again for Mas Chile. Please take food with you because there's plenty. Feed your, feed your families. Um, and thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from the iClarity podcast show today. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time.